What's up everyone? Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today we're going to talk about fiber cultivation. Um, it's another sit down information video. And so the main question we're going to try to answer is where do fibers come from? So this will help you to kind of get this like overall background knowledge on fibers. Um, if this is your first informational video, go check out my other video uh, where I talk about just kind of like what fibers are um, and like what are the major fibers, why is it important to know about fibers, um, and how, how and why this information will be knowledgeable to you in your sewing career and like as you continue on to sew, like the more you know about this, the better um, results you can get from your um, garments. So last time we talked about four major groups of um, fibers, natural, uh, animal, um, synthetic, and regenerated. So when we talk about um, natural, that's like cotton and flax. And then um, synthetic is like polyester, um, spandex, olefin, that type of stuff. Uh, animal is like wool and silk and then uh, regenerated is like rayon and acetate um which are like cellulosic fibers that were like basically regenerated fibers are like wood pulp and then you combine that with chemicals to get your fabrics whereas synthetics are purely chemical based um natural is like cotton um like plant and then animal is like silk and wool, um, like fabrics or fibers that come from animals. So let's talk about natural fiber processing first. So our two main um, fiber categories that I like to think of in natural processing, um, there's a ton more, but when we talk about the big overall picture, um, cotton and flax. So flax is a bast fiber, meaning that it comes from the stem. So when you hear flax, you're probably like, I've never heard of flax before, but flax is the fiber that makes linen. So like in my last video, how we talked about um, flannel, like flannel is the name of the fabric, but that flannel is not the fiber that makes up the fabric. Um, cotton is the fiber that makes up the fabric. And the reason why it's so like fuzzy and has all these characteristics like deals with um cotton and how cotton was processed and also like the um the weave of the garment so we'll get into weaves like further down the line but so um flax makes linen and so flax is a bast fiber meaning it comes from the stem so the fiber cultivation for flax is totally different than it is from cotton um so flax it has to do basically with just cutting it, cutting down the plant, um, and then you kind of, it's called redding, where the plant softens and separates the core from the outer layer. And so there's like two basic ways to do this. One is to submerge in water, which is way faster. And then the other one is to cut, and then it's called dewing, or dew, D-E-W. It's to cut, and then um, you lay it out, and it can like dry in the sun, and that can take up to six weeks. Um, so then from there you kind of just separate um, and get the fiber part out and then you separate the fiber from long and short because um, it's important whenever you're uh, separating fibers to get like all the long, all the short, all the medium together because that's how like fibers are graded on a scale and so the longer the fiber, the more expensive it is, the smoother it is, the better it is. Um, and then like the short staple fibers are known to be cheaper um, and they're not, they're like sought after in a different way. So you want to like identify them by that. So that's kind of the best um, flax cotton uh, cultivation process as cotton will go more into detail with that. Um, any of the fibers that I talk about today, you can always just kind of like Google how um, fiber cultivation on cotton or uh, flax or polyester and it will show you like a really good video and that will sometimes those videos can give me a more um like the picture of the actual process uh, can give you more knowledge than just like reading on it uh, at least for me 
So for cotton, cotton's the li largest fiber produced in the U.S. Um, so the way it's harvested is by a tractor and then the tractor picks the cotton and then the cotton and the seed goes through the cotton gin and basically it just separates it. Um, the cotton goes one, one way, the seeds go the other way. The seeds are um, used as you can, I'm sure if you Google this video, you'll see the same video I get because it's a very, like, there's one video that everybody watches, I'm pretty sure, or they're all pretty much the same. But the video I watched, the seeds go one way and the seeds are used for cattle feed and oil while the cotton is packaged up. They package it, um, they take a little sample, they put two stickers labeling them the sample coming from that and then they go their separate ways the small sample gets packaged and graded based on like we talked about before the length um, and then the overall cotton will get a grade um, so that's kind of a short brief over cotton so then we talk about uh, wool so let's talk about our, our natural protein fibers um, which are fibers that come from animals such as wool and silk um, that, which are kind of the two main categories for this. Leather is, and suede are kind of in their own category that we'll talk about much, much, much later. But wool, um, Australia, New Zealand, and the UK are the largest producers of wool um, and wool plays a major part in the US textile production. Basically wool is the um, like the fur on lamb so you like shear the animal um and then the fleece is inspected like any other textile based on um a, a lot the length the longer it is the, the higher quality it is the fineness the color um the crimp which is like how like curly it is um and, like crimp you can think of like how it kind of springs back and then the strength um, and so the back and shoulders of the lamb are the finest and the legs are known to be the worst uh, for where you get wool from so then we move on to silk silk is the only natural filament fiber so let's backtrack a bit um, Filament fibers are long, continuous fibers. So whenever I think of filament, I think of 3D filament, which is um, basically a long filament strung on or spun on a spool that just keeps coming and coming and coming until the end, kind of like yarn. Um, don't go too deep into the yarn because that's a different, totally with ply and everything like that. But basically it's just one continuous fiber, whereas short staple fibers um, probably the fibers that make up yarn are like these small fibers, um, short, stable, small. So filament's the only natural uh, filament fiber and China is the biggest producer followed by India and Japan. Um, so basically the process is the moth lay the eggs, the eggs hatch and eat these small berry leaves, um, the silkworms produce cocoons, and then the worms are, depending upon which grade of silk you're um, trying to get, there's like different processes for um, everyone. Um, and there's different names for silk, but probably the most common way is it's called um, stifling. And uh, basically the silkworms are boiled alive in their cocoons. Um, that way they don't hatch and break the um break the fiber up because the cocoon when you think about it is spun like filament and so whenever the moth breaks out of the cocoon it's breaking the filament and so there are um there are fabrics made out of that silk but that's not the fine silk silk that you can feel and picture in your head when you think of the word silk the fine silk silk is the um silkworms are boiled alive in their cocoons before they can hatch and um that cocoon is taken and it's unwinded in a filter which is um the the place where they process the silk 
Then we get into manufactured fibers and I kind of want to clarify this because I felt like I've briefly talked about it um, a couple of times but I want to just like set the record straight. So when we talk about uh, manufactured fibers there's three type regenerated which I kind of touched on in the beginning of this video but basically it's cellulosic fibers like the plant fibers like cotton um, and, or any cellulosic material um, and then there's like the synthetic fibers like the chemical petroleum based there's other chemicals that they use but petroleum for some reason is always the first one that pops into my head and you combine these in um a factory in one of these um uh, spinnerets which we'll talk about in a little bit and that gets that uh fiber the regenerated fiber so that's like acetate and rayon and lyocell and some other ones um and then the second type of Manufactured fibers are uh, synthetic fibers, and synthetic is pure 100% chemicals. So you put 100% chemicals in the spinnerets, and you get out um, your fibers such as polyester, olefin, um, nylon, acrylic. Um, and then we talk about mineral fibers, which is a lesser known kind of category and less used. They have special purposes, whereas like polyester, you probably wear every day I guarantee um if you're not wearing it right now you're wearing it tomorrow or the next day you would probably wear polyester a lot um whereas mineral fibers you don't wear as much or ever because uh fiberglass is a mineral fiber and you can't wear fiberglass so these are containing minerals like um glass or metal and they're combining them with chemicals so Okay, so that's kind of like a brief overview on the t the different types of manufactured fibers. But when we go into like how are these fibers processed and made, um, we talk about a spinneret. So a spinneret pretty much is, imagine a shower head. And instead of water coming out, the fibers are coming out. Um, so there's three different types of spinnerets methods. Um, so there's the dry spinning, wet spinning, and melt spinning. And so between these three, they cover all your uh, basic big types of fabrics. Um, and then depending upon which fabric you put in is which um, process you use. So I'm not going to go way into this um, spinneret method, but basically you prepare a dope or a melt and those are put into the spinneret and they're processed through and out comes the fiber. And so like for example, with dry spinning, the doper melt goes through, it's pushed out, and those tiny strands that come out, come out into a dry area with warm, wear, warm air flowing through. Um, and then like wet spinning, it's like the same thing, but it comes out into a chemical bath. So it, it depends upon like which fiber you, you're using. Um, I had them memorized at one point, but now I don't. So like dry spinning is for like acetate and acrylic um melt spinning is nylon olefin and polyester and then uh wet spinning is acrylic lysol rayon and spandex so those are for um any type of manufactured fibers those are how those are processed uh, so i hope this video kind of answered that question for you of how do we cultivate fibers whether it's with a tractor and a cotton gin or it's a spinneret um, so there's like a ton of different ways. Manufactured fibers is probably the easiest way to identify how they're cultivated just because there's so many and they all use a spinneret method, um, whether it be dry, wet, or melt, um, depending on which fiber it is. Um, let me know if you have any questions about anything I covered today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you like these like information or informational videos on fibers or you'd like to see something else. Other than that, I'll talk to you later.